Hello there, everyone. Welcome, welcome to uh, Breton's Monday's Week Ahead webinar. And I uh, hope you guys have had a good weekend. My name is Ken Simon. So we are having these webinars uh, three times a week uh, by Breton Academy. And we are having it on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, so this is where um, we would actually be looking at the week ahead, as we've mentioned, uh, for Mondays. And we're looking at uh, the past 24 hours as well. What are we to expect? in the market as well. So uh, quite a number of things have actually been discussed in our um, Sunday session yesterday as well with regards to commodities, especially um, the uh, two crude oil uh, markets, which are the WTI as well as the Brent oil together with gold. So I just want to highlight a couple of things before we go through uh, the uh, events or risk events or what would actually be in the docket for fundamentals, uh, especially the um, economic data releases in within the economic calendar for the whole week. Uh, so before that, I just want to also highlight uh, a couple of things that I've actually noticed in the markets, uh, especially with um, the markets overview and what they have actually been focused on um, with regards to investors, traders, as well as experts outside. What have they been actually talking about and what are the hints in the market that we should actually be aware of? So one of the things is um, this here has actually been really interesting, this headline here that I have found in Daily FX. Uh, itself and um, here is talking about gold prices a risk forming a double top despite yields drop so um, as we know you know when the uh, bonds yield it's um, when the bonds uh, yield or returns um, fall usually it increases the price for gold gold increases so there's a uh, inverse correlation between the two but now they are saying that um, it's got the risk of dropping despite the uh, yields dropping as well so now it's forming a sort of uh, positive correlation between the two so i've looked into the charts as well and we want to actually look into the chart and find um, areas of uh, risk as well so that we can actually um, plant our uh, support and resistance levels correctly accurately as well so we are able to actually take decisions of uh, buying and selling in accordance to your trading style and trading type whether it is short term intraday medium or long term so at least we are well aware of the trend current trend as well as how do we actually uh, trade it in accordance to your trading style and type so uh, this is gold that i want to highlight there as well uh, we want to also look into crude oil a little bit it says here crude oil prices drop after weaker china pmi so uh, that has definitely been a uh, factor that uh, could actually be um, um, impacting the price of oil mainly because china is one of the largest buyer or importer of oil of crude oil as well so here it's uh, talked about how it has actually pulled back uh, today uh, earlier today in today's uh, session when the market opened uh, basically it started in uh, sydney uh, and all that in uh, some parts of asia and hence the reason it has um, sort of um, uh, been impacted with all the uh, you know, release and the sessions open with Shanghai index and there is other as well. So um, it has followed the uh, weaker than expected uh, China NBS PMI figures. So that is one of the reasons of looking at a potential retracement of the uh, WTI. We have talked about oil yesterday as well and we've talked about how uh, it is actually in within the bullish uh, um, in within the bullish sort of um, sentiments or zone buying zone as well so yeah that is basically it and we want to actually look into that as well so it's a couple of things that we need to uh be informed about or be aware about and that is basically the whole week's uh, data economic data uh, of course what's going on with um, the bond yields again and um, now basically as it drops we might be looking into the dropping of uh, gold prices as well so it's quite different from what we have actually discussed as of yesterday so uh, this is just to highlight how um, correlations can change even overnight so now 
now it has sort of changed overnight. I mean, we have talked about how the bond yield is co is negative negatively correlated to gold prices, right? So we were looking at gold prices going down and going down. Uh, sorry, the yields going down and going down more. And then the more it goes down, the more gold prices would actually go down. But now suddenly within the 24 hours side of uh, uh, things, uh, it is not going to be like that. So we want to also look at patterns, price patterns, um, you know, like double top and various other things that we can actually find technically as well. So this is how um, it is really important for us to understand and accept the uh the fact that we need to be very versatile we cannot actually have one theory one concept in our mind as traders and think that uh for example something and something an instrument and, and another instrument is positively correlated so we can actually base on that no we can actually have that at the back of our mind but then we need to also have it at the back of our mind that it can actually change um in, in, in no time. Basically, it's in the shortest period of time, like how it is with gold and yield prices, just literally change overnight, uh, straight away. You know, it's been highlighted here as well. So it is uh, basically what has actually happened as of market open. So I just want to keep all the traders aware and also safe in understanding all these things as well. Uh, so we are then able to actually not only write the trend, but be aware of all all these changes uh, that we are familiar with and then we need to understand that all these changes can happen at any moment of time correlations positive correlations can become negative correlations and vice versa, uh, vice versa. okay all right so uh what we can then do uh, right now is just to get uh, a little bit of an insight in terms of the top movers as well and then we look into a little bit on the trend and we'll go through um the open uh, uh, trades as well and then i will be releasing some uh, fresh signals in accordance to the market's conditions as of today and for the following couple of days in this week okay so um, in terms of top movers as we can actually see right here we've got quite a number of four dots going on here which basically means uh, trend clarity is forming in uh, all four time frames from four hour right up to the monthly chart uh, but then uh, as i can see from um, from position one right down to position 10, we can see that it's been focused a lot on NZD. So NZD crosses has actually dominated uh, at least uh, five places, uh, top five of this whole table. And we can see that GBP, NZD, Euro, NZD, and NZD, JPY are the, are the top three movers in the market. And out of this top three right here, we can see that Euro, NZD seems to actually be uh, on the positive side. And then uh, we can also see that majority of JPY is, is um, experiencing a lot of selling, uh, a lot of selling on the on uh, on JP on the uh, NZD, sorry. So here, for example, GBP NZD, we've got a positive right here. So that positive change is actually positive for the base currency, which is GBP. So that basically means a majority of traders are buying the GBP and then they're selling the NZD. Okay, so here, secondly, here's a plus as well. So buying euro, selling NZD, NZD in, in number three, it's selling here because it's negative. So selling NZD, buying JPY. So there's a lot of selling going on in NZD. Um, sometimes we um, can, can focus on the why, but not to focus on why too much because uh, it sometimes has got reasons yes but then majority of the time it could actually be uh, beneficial for the bigger boys and the bigger um, uh, banks and all that to actually uh, just cover their positions and do what benefits them so sometimes it's not what we see is what we get in terms of the fundamental factor that are driving certain pair up or certain pair down. Uh, so sometimes, you know, it can also be a trick to actually make us believe that this is the news that is driving it, but majority of the uh, movement may not actually be just because of that news. So uh, we want to actually be very careful with that, especially with the trend. So sometimes uh, the window of the market could actually be 
through the charts. So through the charts could actually give you a better insight in terms of uh, whether there's uncertainty, strength of trend or things like that. That is why we want to actually always uh, go on to bigger time frames, uh, higher time frames in order for us to get a better insight in terms of the power of buyers, power of sellers, and where are the risk levels and things like that and the trend, of course. Okay, so we can actually see NZD uh, dominating. So I'll just write down NZD as well, just so we know. Um, but then the top three would actually be the GDP, um, the Euro, as well as the JPY. And uh, what we want to do next is we want to also go on to our economic calendar after we've looked into the heat map as well, just so that we can actually marry up what could actually be volatile in the market with what has already been moving and already been paid a lot of attention and interest in the market amongst all the pairs. Okay, then we want to match it up so we can actually then cherry pick uh, better pairs to actually trade for today. Okay, so here we have got GBP, Euro, and NZD. Uh, but out of this one here, Euro, NZD, out of the top three, Euro, NZD seems to have um, the clarity of trend apparently right here. But uh, is it really accurate? No, we don't actually rely on the accuracy on this. It's just a rough idea. Uh, we want to pick all the four dots ones so that we can actually do a little bit of a um, further uh, analysis based on the charts as well in order for us to do a trend analysis. Now what we are doing now is market analysis. Look into the market as a whole, what's been driving the market for the past 24 hours, what are the good uh, top headlines that we need to be aware of. That's market analysis. And then uh, once we have actually sort of picked the right pairs and stuff like that uh, to analyze further, then we do the trend analysis based on the charts and the time frame and all that. Then we do the technical analysis and then uh, we actually make the decision of whether to buy, enter, exit, pending order and various other things, okay? So here I will uh, list down Euro uh, NZD to look further into because it's got four dots right here. And then NZD again uh, with NZD in it, uh, NZD USD as well. And then we've got something right here, NZD CHF. So this uh, this can actually change as well, okay? All these dots, uh, maybe the next couple of minutes or the next hour, next two hours, who knows, these four dots can actually just turn into one dot, for example, right? Uh, so what we do is that we just based on what is happening for now, because it is resetting and basically changes every time it gets a refresh um you know it depends on their timing actually so it depends on the volatility of the market as well so uh, we just want to list down what we can actually see at a time that you are seeing it so it's no not really a big uh, problem with that uh, mainly because you are using um you know using this sort of approach for your timing at the time that you are ready to actually analyze the market do a bit of market analysis you just based on that because at the end of the day um, your analysis will be polished from how you actually analyze the trend on your chart itself, okay? And ZD CHF, the next one is USD uh, CAD, um, okay? So this is just a generic idea of pairs that we can look into just as a rough idea of how it's moving, the candles, is it active, uh, trend, is it clear, and whether there are opportunities or not. Because if we find these four, and then out of the four, we find one that is really strong, we can then find correlated pairs as well, and then match that with fundamentals, events, and various other things. Okay, so we have got that going. Now we'll just take a look at the currency heat map is to get a little bit of an idea of trend, okay? Uh, is it really accurate? No, it, it gives us a bit of an idea and then we can actually match that a little bit with what we have just picked out from the um, the, uh, the table of top movers. So here, for example, as you can see, all of the currencies right here seems to be um, reasonably, moderately bullish again, CHF, CAD, AUD, NZD. You can see the rows are a little bit clearer uh, with blue. So blue means uh, bullish. So they are bullish against CHF, CAD, AUD, and NZD. So in other words, CHF seems to be weak. 
CAD week, AUD week, and ZD week. Uh, so we just want to go individually as well and look at uh, each one currency, whether or not we have got columns uh, that are dark blue or dark red. Um, dark, um, light blue and light red just hasn't given us that trend clarity or trend strength yet. Okay, so we don't really see, we can see that AUD seems to be quite nicely, moderately uh, bullish against CHF, CAD, and NZD. So I want to also look at CAD, CHF. So you can see there's a pattern going on uh, where the concentration are on CAD, CHF, and NZD. Uh, we can see that as well onto the, um, the charts just now, onto the um, top 10 movers as well. So then we get a little bit of an idea. So AUD is um bullish okay is bullish against the three currencies right here so that might give us a little bit of a of a hint uh, basically aud could potentially be a little bit stronger than nzd so we know now that nzd is weak and weaker and uh, maybe throughout the, the the course of the day we might see more dark rate this this rate um, light rate has to be turned to dark rate and as it goes into dark rate then we know uh, that NZD is getting uh, weaker and weaker then we can actually confirm the weakness and the bearishness of NZD onto the chart and compare time frames and see that for ourselves whether that is the case or not okay so we don't really get very clear picture here but we get a little bit of building up of the trend um, okay and uh, that is basically it here for example we have the straight row of blue so we can actually see that most of these currencies here are uh, moderately bullish um, compared to the NZD. So NZD is picking up on the weakness onto the bearishness at this moment of time. So that is this one little piece of information we can actually get. Uh, also, we can go on to the action bias right here. Okay. And we want to take a look at all these straight rows. Um, we can, if, if you've got all these all four having either an arrow up arrow down that could actually confirm what's going on there so we can see euro chf um sort of having a straight row but three here not too bad it's building up so we want the short term as well to mirror what is going on in the long term euro chf euro chf on the downside um do we have it as part of it not yet uh, AUD JPY to look at as well, AUD CHF, AUD NZD. So what I would actually be looking uh, here based on this action bias is to also follow these ones to make um, uh, further trade signals based on these ones here, but after I have actually analyzed it further. So Euro CHF, um, I would write this down. Um, it's on the arrow down side of it. Uh, AUD JPY on the arrow down as well. These are all on action bias uh, tool on the on action forex AUD JPY and then we have got AUD CHF. Okay, it's a pattern right here that uh, the concentration is a lot on uh, both antipodian currencies. Antipodian currencies are both uh, Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar. They're called antipodians. Okay, so sometimes uh, you know we get a little bit confused when we look into the news, and the news doesn't say um, doesn't say um, the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar. It says the antipodian currency seems to be on the weak side or the the upside. You know, so sometimes we want to be careful with the language that they are actually using in order for us not to miss out any opportunities as as well so AUD JPY I've got that written down AUD CHF yeah AUD CHF right here it's on the downside as well as AUD and ZD so AUD and ZD there's a lot of uh, concentration on NZD AUD NZD uh, CHF uh, as well okay so this one here is on the action bias this one here is on top movers all right just so that we get this cluster of um pairs to watch out for and to actually then match it with what we 
uh, would be able to see in the news as well, uh, also together with that on any economic data release. So let's take a look a little bit before we get into the technical side of it, onto the technical chart, on what is to expect in terms of volatility from which country, what currency pair, uh, and just to look at all these data releases expected, what are the high impact ones from today, August 2nd, and uh, we can actually see uh, as of today, uh, August 2nd, for a Monday, it's quite a busy Monday, okay? It's not very common uh, this happens, but it does actually happen from time to time. So we've got um, possibility of Euro um, actually being moved by the uh, German Germany's retail sales. And then we also have uh, US uh, manufacturing data. We've talked a lot about that yesterday as well. Uh, so we want to look at that uh, as well, USD. So we can see that it probably be matching with what we have actually seen there's a lot of euro um, crosses as well so that could actually be impacted and also uh, usd crosses so usd crosses especially uh, with aud with nzd with chf with cad uh, these are so i think the major pairs is good to actually look at as well including euro usd and then we want to look at uh, euro crosses as well especially um, euro versus nzd and also euro versus the chf seems to be um, um, being paid a lot of attention uh, today with uh, interest by traders and investors. Okay, so we've got that today. And then tomorrow, Tuesday, August 3rd, we are looking at a lot of movement um, in the antipodians, okay, especially Australian dollar. So because we've got the um, Royal Bank of Australia interest rate going on, we've got a very important uh, rate statement there with the interest rate decision. So that is actually uh, quite moving with the current lockdown and everything else as well, uh, we want to um, expect for the fall if, uh, for example, we want to look at all our TPs getting hit as well, especially with our AUD crosses that we have actually planned since last week. Uh, but uh, there is very likely that the situation is uh, going to prolong. Uh, there is uh, very, uh, you know, little confidence at the moment uh, with a lot of things because they've been impacted a lot with their manufacturing, uh, sorry, the export side of it, of their minerals and all that. It's not been leaving their port. Uh, everything is jammed up as well. So they they want to get that running, of course, but then uh, this would actually just pull down everything for now, but there will be a correction later on once they have announced everything to be uh, sorted out and they are getting back into plan. So it, between now and then, uh, it is still on the downside for Australian dollar, but again, anything can happen at any moment of time. That is why we want to look at certain pairs and we want to also have certain pairs that is for today's trade to actually cushion what we have actually opened already as of last week, uh, because that could actually be a bonus if uh, everything starts turning to our direction. So whether that is happening or not, we will look at it together in the, on the chart uh, in a bit. Okay, so that is um, Mondays here, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, um, it's quite heavy. And again, uh, it's antipodian currency. So we've got NZD, uh, Commonwealth Bank, uh, this unemployment, unemployment change, all these ones. And we've got some others, Commonwealth Bank services and all that, not really very big uh, or impacting the market too much. But the employment and unemployment of New Zealand, yes, it does uh, have that. And again, we have the Australian retail sales as well. So we want to, I think we would actually experience loads of trading opportunities with Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar. But uh, we as traders who have actually planned our trades as well, I think we're looking into the downside of these um, uh, trades. Uh, especially on the bearishness side of it. So, um, and you can actually see on Wednesday, August 4th, it's just very, very big, long docket of uh, economic data. And there are a lot of, uh, you know, it will impact Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, um, the euro, especially because of the retail sales uh, side of it, they're expecting this uh, to be a very important gauge of how things are uh, because of the you know collection of all the European countries as well to form the eurozone. So they want to see it as a whole. And then we've got ADP. So ADP employment figures would actually then uh, give us a little bit of a peak 
uh, or window of the NFP coming on Friday. So we've got the uh, first Friday of the month happening this Friday. So that's an NFP day as well. So we are looking at a very, very busy week, a very volatile movement on Wednesday uh, because we've got all these movements expected. So uh, we've got to make some money to cover up some losses as of uh, last week, uh, still floating a lot uh, of uh, my own trades as well, a majority of traders. Uh, but uh, we seem to believe, uh, including myself, that we are still in the right side of the market. Um, so we want to take a look at that as well on a daily basis, of course, and also during our sessions. So um, we see that August 5th uh, is a GBP trading day as well, because uh, you could actually see we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine um, events or or things that are listed here in the economy calendar as being really, really, really important as well as volatile for the market. So Thursday would actually probably be a fantastic, hopefully, GBP trading day if we write the market correctly, of course. Yeah. So that is where we can see uh, we have got the governor's speech, we've got monetary policy, we have got MPC, BOE, uh, we have got monetary policy summary, we've got asset purchase for they are all just long lists of very, very high impact uh, data releases okay so yes so with that um, then we end uh, we will be ending Friday with some more antipodian uh, high impact news especially for Australia and let's see Australia's uh, governor speech as well as the monetary policy and then we have got Nanfam payroll NFP okay so um, today uh, on Wednesday it will be a sort of a uh, uh, a gauge just to see how the NFP would perform through the ADP. So ADP usually gets released on Wednesdays. That is the automated uh, version, uh, just to give us a little bit of a snippet of what to expect roughly. Will it actually be totally accurate? No, but it gives us a little bit of a hint. And you know why? Because from the ADP itself, which gets released two days before the actual NFP, usually that's how the, the media and mainstream media start to make all these gossips and all these sentiments of the market start forming as well. Okay. All right. So, and that usually creates volatility for us to trade. Now, um, we've also got Canadian numbers, so two Canadian numbers right there. So that is very important for us to know. Um, and that's it. That is actually the whole um, economic calendar review or preview for us to actually consider, um, you know, them being what would actually impact the market as well as impact our trades. Okay, so now it's time for us to actually go on to the chart and let's take a look at um, gold first because we've talked about gold in yesterday's commodity session and uh, it's trading now, it's gone down. It's actually, um, this is on the daily chart. It's trading at 1808.38 at this moment of time. And we can actually see, uh, remember, we've talked about this whole um, idea of it overlap between a bullish zone and a, um, a, a bearish zone, right? So that is now confirmed that uh, the correlation between the yield and the gold has happened. So that is why um, sometimes I feel that the technical could give us a hint, but we don't know what are the actual changes but the hints can actually be seen onto the chart. So it's not clear up, it's not clear down, something is happening. And that something happened already, whereby uh, as of the market opened, the correlation just didn't actually happen anymore. The correlation between, um, between the bond yield, a negative correlation between the bond yield and the gold prices just just didn't happen anymore, you see? So that is why we want to actually look at all this now on a technical perspective as well, uh, because the fundamentals sort of broke up 
there so now we can look at the technicals and hopefully can give us a clearer picture so uh, still as what we have actually mentioned yesterday uh, that it all depends on how the price is actually moving for gold whether or not it is favoring uh, the downside entering into the bearish zone a bearish or bar or selling zone now from what i am seeing now and what we can actually see together is that it is challenging that border of the buy zone and it might want to go lower as it goes lower it might um, be more comfortable in the selling side of it so that does actually mean that it is going into the selling zone which is happening right now as we speak so it is coming downwards and as it comes lower i would think that once it goes lower and uh, out of the blue box, blue um, buying zone and getting into the sell box or the sell selling zone, um, especially if it goes as low as 1800 and 1800 uh, onwards, I think it will actually fall much, much more. Okay, so it will be selling opportunity for gold uh, much more than buying opportunity. So you see now at this stage, we as traders cannot actually use that simple concept that we are used to, like gold is uh, down because uh, US is up and stuff like that. We cannot, we have to go deeper than that. We have to understand a little bit more about the bond yield. And then we need to be informed as well that that correlation has just started to uh, not work anymore as of today, as of uh, today's uh, Monday session when it opened. So uh, here I see that uh, the potential of it falling would actually be higher or the uh, possibility probability would actually be higher. Um, mainly because as we see, it's not only entering into the selling zone at this moment of time for gold, but also it is entering with a body that has no wick on a weekly chart. And this is basically very, very powerful hint for us to understand that there is a possibility uh, of it to fall much, much more. Uh, also, we have this is a solid uh, support area right there. We've got another support area right there too. So what does this mean? This means that if you are looking into the potential of selling today, throughout today, you see that the body of the candle, whether it is the 30 minute chart, the one hour chart, wherever you are looking at, uh, you need to be careful in exiting, okay? In exiting at 1787.60. So that means, okay, you wanna sell now? Yes, you can, you can sell now, it's at your risk, but because it is going into the selling zone already, and is hinting us um, the selling sentiment or bearish sentiment, yes, you can sell. Now it is at 1807. If you want to wait a little bit more at 1800, would probably be better for an entry, you know, at 1800 and under. But if you are entering at 1800 or anywhere now or later, make sure you are exiting at 1788 okay at least 1788 you need to exit just because we see a lot of uh, very strong support uh, the next uh, exit point if you sell again for example under 1787 you're selling again then you want to exit at 1768 okay that is another very strong support area right there that is for gold so this is just looking at bigger uh, perspective and then giving you the price based on the bigger perspective okay just to protect you uh, in terms of not letting your trades going too far too fast and then get trapped uh, with it so now if we go on to let's say shorter time frame like 30 minutes and things like that uh, let's just we want to now start with 30 minutes. I'll be posting the trade signals and ideas, uh, short term, medium and long term, basically, um, in the uh, BKFX uh, members area. Okay, so now, as you can see, close up is showing you that it is under that border already. It's entering the selling zone uh, at 1807.80s or so is the trading price for now. So we compare 30 minutes to a slightly higher time frame, the one hour, we can actually see 
the body of the candle itself right there, it's looking quite good. Yeah, it's not having a very long wick at the very bottom, which is a good sign that it can actually go further down. And then we compare the one hour chart with the four hour chart and we can see that that candle there is still remains. We see it is still reasonably quite strong. Um, we don't see a very long week below. It is reasonable. And then we compare that to the daily chart. Now, the daily chart, the same candle right there, is showing you a week to the upside. And that shows that the weakness could actually be to the upside and not to the downside. The downside is happening at the moment. It is getting into a selling zone, just getting into it. Not really very strong yet, though. Uh, may, perhaps it is actually, you know, just waiting for a London session to open, more participation of traders to come in. Now, the same goes on the weekly chart as well. We have got lesser week on the downside, but a bit of a week at the top. Okay, which is a good sign that uh, it would favor more um, downward move as opposed to a down uh, upward tightening. Okay, so there you go. So we are now focusing on that zone and that area right there. Okay, so we can always go into the four hour chart, start looking at it from there, and then we can actually see that as it actually falls downwards, we have got this candle right here, bearish mother candle right here to actually um, sort of um, watch where we can actually exit as well, okay? Because as it actually falls following this, we don't have any other support here, but then the finishing of that mother candle's body could actually be your support and that would actually be your shortest term. So let's say now you're selling and you're thinking of selling right now. And if you're selling right now, then you want to actually exit at 18.02 at least or 18.02.60, let's say, or 18.03, okay? Just so that we can be sure that this is not going to impact us in any way what if it shoots up or something fuel the market this is where it might want to go up from but it can actually definitely go lower as well but it's good for you to trade in little bite sizes especially if we're not really sure as yet how strong the downtrend is the further it goes down and further it goes lower and lower and further into the selling zone then we are a little bit safer okay so we also will have another support area here okay this is based on the four hour chart itself uh and maybe i will move this one up a little bit there and that is your next uh, exit as well okay 1799.21 so this is basically it uh, an area but i would see that uh, this is probably good for a sell right now and then we will take that a little bit more um, later on because we also see that um, because there's no wick here as well that means that you know it's been a very decisive sell uh, by the traders and investors to enter the market and it coincidentally met at the 200 EMA as well as a very strong resistance point and then the sellers comes in uh, with ver being very decisive they didn't go up first they didn't buy first and stuff they just go into it straight away into the cell so that does actually hint us that the cell wants to occur much more than the buy and uh, we have all these dominant candles as you can see they are majority um, very very strong candles as, uh, as well on the four hour chart so yes this is for gold at this moment of time so yes you can actually sell and you're selling basically uh, could also start later for those who wants to start a little bit later not selling now you can start selling at 1806 um you know or, or maybe 1805 even and then and then take that through to 1802 exit a little bit and then you can trade it on a short term small bite pieces as well until it goes lower than 1800 then we can actually increase our lot size a little bit more and then because it's already in the midway and into the cell zone quite deeply by then you see so right now it is just quarter way uh, there if we are trading there and then halfway here but under this area under 1799 onwards and under 1787 or 1780s area it would actually be much stronger right there but uh, we want to also look at exit points 
here as well at 1773, just in case, because that's the finishing of that mother candle on the left. This is based on the daily chart. Okay, there you go, guys. That is for gold. Any questions on gold before we look into um, the other uh, pairs? Any questions on gold? We'll just very quickly uh, look into UK oil and US oil as well, just so that we get a bit of an idea. Okay, all good. Let's see. All right, brilliant, all good. No questions on gold, yeah? Okay. One second, let me just apply. All right, so we will then look into, this is US oil at this moment of time. Let's look into US oil. And with US oil, as we have also uh, predicted as of yesterday, uh, we just want to uh, focus on that area right here. It has already gone down lower than the 7300 area. So now it's trading at 7280 psychological level. So for both US oil and UK oil and the currencies, we can use psychological numbers, we can use psychology numbers. Okay, so they are the 00, the 50, the 80, and the 20. So here, for example, uh, it is trading exactly at 72.80 psychological number, psychological number 80. So if we are looking at more selling, um, we need to look at the price of 72.70 onwards, okay? So it's 10 pips under or 10 pips, 10 units under the 80 psychological uh, number. So 72.70 would be a better ideal price for selling for selling the US oil. So here, for example, yes, we do have some selling here, selling and stuff like that. Uh, but what I would then think would probably be best to do is for me to actually erase all these things, start afresh, um, only because we're expecting more uh, action in the OPEC uh, decisions as well and various other things. Uh, but we want to look at it in a bigger picture and we want to see what's going on. Now, I want to highlight something really important here as well is this, um, let's say, if, even if it is in a daily chart, let's see. We don't see it on a daily chart, but we see this clearly on the weekly chart is this pin bar right here, okay? Now, this pin bar right here is a very, very um, uh, significant uh, candle that shows us a reversal, actually, okay? So, yes, it's going up and all that. It came down here, and then it started moving up as well. So, it could actually be a little bit of a trick to traders thinking that, okay, it's time to go up and all that. But then I'm actually a little bit concerned with this one here. So, what if it goes up a little bit and then it uh, mirrors this uh, resistant area right here? Okay, and if it does actually mirror it right here, then it will find resistance right there and then boom, come down much more. So hence the reason I've mentioned as well yesterday that we need to monitor the news factor uh, first because the news factor, what goes out uh, in the news with the decisions uh, by OPAC and all that would then confirm the trend. At this moment of time, there is no base on the fundamental for it to actually drop or go up yet. So uh, we are in a very sensitive mode to actually trade US oil at this moment of time. Okay. And um, I would think that there may be a very uh, sort of um, drastic decision that would actually be made and then it would most probably drop everything. So here, uh, drop the prices. So here, for example, uh, we can see that on the monthly chart, we are facing a sort of a double top at this moment of time. And this whole area, let me just put it here in this yellow line right here, is sort of a border already uh, sort of made uh, to actually show that it is quite difficult for it to actually really go up at this stage. So there may be more uh, potential for it to go down. 
also because it has now begun to respect all these uh, opening prizes of these mother candles of bearish candles. So this is actually going to be, um, I would think, a little bit more um, biased to the downside for US oil. Okay, And also it's already entering a sort of um, bearish zone right here, short term in a way, but already in a selling zone. So I would think that if you are uh, thinking of trading the US oil, it's probably be better uh, biased to the downside for a sell. And the sell price would probably be better at 70 to 70. Okay, so I will just mark that um, maybe a, a different color right here and the price is 7270 okay so 72.70 oh. okay 2.70 there you go okay so 7270 right there and uh 72.70 selling and then we can actually maybe take a short term tight exit right here um, perhaps at 6990 okay so here for example let's just okay there we go nine zero so you have got a, a selling type uh, trigger price 72.70 you sell you exit at 69.90 of course this is all based on the monthly type chart and we see this whole angle here and this is where i see that you can trade at this area but for a sell now you need to match your um, that zone of trading with your own trading style in terms of uh, when you want to exit and when you want to enter again stuff like that um, in within this this area okay so i will mark this area again for your trading area as the black sea area okay but you need to insert you need to apply your own trading style in it okay you can use your indicator and all that but this is basically what what it means is that this whole area right here is a black trading zone for selling once it enters 72.70 price okay uh, so i see the potential of it actually falling so you don't see that potential of falling in the one hour chart you cannot see that right because it's just not showing you of um of any significant it shows you that okay you've got a bit of support right there you've got all these uh, lines uh, three lines as well uh, as you go on to the four hour chart then you can actually see um, whether or not you've got dominance of of uh, more sell so as you go up and up on the time frame it gives you a better clearer picture that the selling could actually happen at that uh, zone okay but as you can see uh, here for example you have it all on support on support to go up um, but that could also happen yes but you can see that even on the four hour chart you need to look to the left okay as it goes up you can see it's been it might be challenged uh, at this area right here as well okay 7380 exactly on the psychological number as you go to the time frame, the daily time frame as well, um, as it goes up, you will be challenged right here with a big drop as well. So there is a very big limit onto the upside story of US oil. Why? We don't know that yet. But then from looking at the chart, know that it's biased to the downside. It's got a lot of limit to the upside. It's got a lot of strong resistance to the upside. So what we want at this moment of time is the next couple of hours and the next couple of days, we need more news to tell us that US oil is getting weaker. If the US oil is getting weaker and the news is coming to support us that the US oil is getting weaker, then we are most probably going to see a good uh, sell riding on the sell because technically it's already hinting uh, that there is a limit to the upside for US oil. Okay. All right. So is that clear for US oil? You guys okay so far? All good?
before we get on to the UK oil. Now, UK oil is a little bit clearer. It is already showing us uh, how it wants to really go down. And it's the same thing. Maybe they want to, maybe the investors and the traders want to buy oil cheaper. So it goes down first and then it will find support at this area, perhaps. We don't know. Or maybe find support at the uh, 7380 area or just at the border of 7397 which is the border of this blue zone right here okay so uh, this is where i see that uh, there is a potential of it rising but maybe to keep the uk oil a bit lower so probably go down a little bit or go up and zigzag a little bit but it is still in a um, bullish zone for uk oil for uk for us oil it's already in a bearish zone or selling zone in the uk oil it is still in a um, buying zone okay so it's quite different but whether or not it will come down lower before it goes up uh, that we don't know that yet but because we have also discussed as of yesterday about the rig count and uh, big companies like Shell, BP, and all that, they are actually increasing, uh, even Chevron, increasing their rigs um, account as well. The rigs, the offshore platform to drill uh, more oil is actually going to go up. So that does actually uh, look into production uh, being more. So if there's more production, more supply, uh, we just need to know whether or not the supply will actually be more than the demand. So if it is more than the demand, uh, then the price would actually drop as well. So hence the reason we want to pause a little bit our decision and our trading just so that we get more clarity from the news, uh, from the fundamental side of it that would actually impact oil. Okay, all right, there you go. So that's it. That's basically it for oil as far as we can see. Okay. Uh, but, you know, this is a V shape uh, type thing, not a very uh, nice uh, clear shape, but it is sort of like a V. And then it would create, uh, if it goes up here uh, or a little bit higher as well, it would actually create that, uh, that double top thing. It's not yet double top so much. It didn't actually mirror this area right here. So yes, there is a potential for it to go up and up, but then, you know, where it finds resistance is very, very, um, important for us 75.30 is a very very significant resistant area so this can actually go up and go up you can actually ride uh, ride the trend for example uh, you can actually make some money on the upside of it uh, up to about 74 let's say 74.90 or so you need to exit uh, if you are buying right now yes you can do that you can trade little by little but make sure Whatever you do, if you are buying, you must exit at 7530, okay? Uh, because this is, look at this significant, really huge candle right here. This candle alone, uh, mother candle that is on the four hour chart has dropped price from 7530 right down to um, 72.55. So that is a very significant drop, especially by a single mother candle of uh, a single bearish mother candle and just the body, just the body itself. Okay, so that is where uh, we can also see other resistant level, other resistant level is supporting that resistant area that has been, um, you know, made by the opening price of a single mother candle. Okay. Yes, we can. We will take a look at Euro and ZD as well. Okay, so um, now we have covered UK oil and US oil. We can look at that. Um, Zakun, Euro and ZD, right? Okay, let's take a look at Euro and ZD. This Euro JPY, I replace that with Euro and ZD. Okay, let's take a look. This is one of the um, one of the uh, one of the um, pairs that we have also said we would like to take a look. So that's good. Um, for our chart right now, um, it's just showing you that it is above all um, 
uh, lines, three lines as well, but I see that we may have a little bit of a risk of it reversing, finding resistance at the 1.7050s area. Okay, you can see that very, very significant uh, resistant, resistant. Now, as we speak, it is actually reversing to the downside. So I would think that uh, at 70, 40 onwards or now, right now, is probably timing for the sell to actually take place. Um, but let's also look at the bigger picture, weekly chart, daily chart, okay? Um, very big resistant area, okay? Um, it's just looking like it has governed and, um, and, and sort of blocked this whole area here so price cannot go up further. So at this moment of time, I think the bias is to the downside for um, Euro NZD. Let's see. Let's see. We go to the biggest time frame. Look at what's going on. So um, for Euro and ZD, can it, it looks like it's very impossible for it to go up beyond this area anyway. But that is far, far up at the one point eight uh, area, one point eight four or something like that. But now we're looking at this price right here. It's trading at the uh, trading very closely to seventy fifties area. Okay, and we do have all these bearish candle, bearish mother candles and everything else. So let's go down one step. Okay, let's look at this. Still very much trapped right there with all the three lines going like this on the weekly chart. Um, it just shows us that it's got more bias to the downside. It is also in a bearish or selling zone as well. Um, let's take a look at the selling zone in a second. We go to daily chart and let's look at it there. Now on the daily chart itself, um, we can actually see this mother candle right here. It's riding and most probably is thinking of riding this, uh, this candle right here. So we can actually use a red rectangle there measured um, with the body of the candle okay right so the opening price of this mother candle um, i'm going to make this one thinner so it's more accurate Second. there you go uh, take that and go here. Now, 7042, it says. So 7040 onwards, which is under the 7050, can actually start selling. So we can start selling as of now itself. So as you actually sell, um, we're looking at a daily chart at this moment of time. The sort of limit uh, would actually be right here uh, if we are looking at that bearish candle uh, right there. And we've got many others to support the bearish candle. And we can also see that the opening price, uh, they prefer to actually open the price a little bit lower at 7020 psychological number. Okay. So that basically means that uh, when the price actually reaches 70, 20 and under, uh, we may see more selling pressure coming in and faster the candle would most probably be. Uh, so <coughs> 70, 10 is another good selling price for, for Euro and ZD, okay? 7010 right there, okay? So we've got there a second entry. Your first entry is now, for example, you're selling right now, 7040 you are selling. And I would think that you would be best to exit at 7010 and then re-enter or keep that trade on as well because it is exactly at the same price of where we can actually exit. Uh, we don't exit, yes, we exit at 7010 as well. Yeah, that's correct. So if you're selling right now, your exit price 7010, uh, or you can actually leave the trade open or re enter a second trade, for example, and then you can take that at 1.7010 is your entry price as well. Um, and then you can actually take it uh, down to this area right here. Okay. And that is at 69.90. So 69.90 is your exit price as well. Not much there, but just to be on the safe side. Okay. There you go. So you've got your exit at 
Um, so if you are entering right now, you can actually exit at 70.10 or keep that trade open and uh, exit at 69.90 or keep that trade open again as it goes stronger to the downside and exit only at 69.68 um, or something like that. Okay, just above this area. So. Something like that. Okay. So yes, there are some uh, looking like there are some selling type um, what do you call that opportunity here on Euro and ZD. Um, and it's still going to be on a sideway type thing, but then it looks like uh, we've got challenges uh, for it to actually go up. So I would think that um, under this area right here, this is based on a four hour chart under 70.33 or starting at 70.33 onwards, if it goes lower uh, with the body of the candle at 70.33, then we have more confidence that it will actually go down a lot. But here it's already, you know, given you the hints of uh, a lot of um, uh, selling pressure already here. Anyway, it's actually uh, governed this area right here uh, let's see okay 7050 area is a very strong resistant uh, area so and if we look at one hour chart we can see the same thing as well uh, we have got that um, pin bar candle right there is already telling you that it's it's going to go down mainly because it's it's exhausted to the upside even on the one hour chart and then you follow through the four hour chart it's given you that as well that that whole uh, candle right there very very strong uh, resistant candle resistant candle so I would think uh, the bias is to the downside for Euro NZD and with the um, numbers or prices there okay is that clear Mr. Kunan? all good Euro and ZD, brilliant. Okay, there you go, guys. Um, I'll be sharing more uh, specific pairs, basically with uh, entries and exit in the BKFX members area. Uh, but right now, I think we have got some that we need to actually look at um, that has been left as of last week. Okay, we've got GBP and ZD up and down, up and down, but it is still bearish to the downside. It, it, created a stronger resistance right there as well. It's still in a selling zone, but it is flirting with the 3920s area. It needs to go lower than 3920s uh, for it to actually come down lower. So whether or not it uh, bursts, will burst out from that zone, we don't know that yet. It is possible, but again, we've got resistance as well in that uh, area of a breakout. So we want to remain steady on our GBP USD. Uh, CAD JPY, I'm still keeping that trade uh, open and basically still um, waiting for that whole reversal to take place. Uh, it is creating stronger resistance though at that area close to the C point of the bearish ABCD pattern. So it's creating even stronger because of all these candles going like this as well. And it's creating a very solid area uh, of resistance. So um, hopefully, you know, that will actually encourage it to actually go down uh, much stronger as well so that it can actually just trigger that area of the sell area and the TP area. And then we can look into going down much more in terms of selling much more and then aiming it all the way down at this area. But now it's too early to talk about that. We just need to for it to actually reverse and come down and uh, stabilize our losses first, reduce our losses, uh, get back to break even, and then get into profit as well. Okay. Now, AUD USD is looking not too bad in terms of how much it has actually fallen uh, because it has tricked a lot of traders going above these two zones, if you guys remember. But then it got caught up and then boom, came down, got caught up at the 50, at the 100 uh, exponential moving average area, come down re-entered the whole uh, zone or a setting zone right there now it's challenging that zone again making a little bit of a resistant area and hopefully that could then um, bang it down again much more uh, for us to actually aim at further uh, AUD USD selling so at this moment of time it looks like there is a chance for that but it also depends on how 
the Bank of Australia as well, as we have actually seen a lot, a lot of uh, news and data that we will be expecting from Australia as well. Okay, so the same goes for AUD, AUD JPY, I think we've already hit the TP uh, on the sell from this area right here down to this area as a TP. So uh, after this, we are not really doing a lot more because we would like to take profit on the AUD JPY and not do any other trading because of it going sideways in within this area. But as it uh, goes lower than 1833 and then comes down much lower, then yes, we will, uh, we will then enter the trade for a sell much more because it is already in within the selling zone. It is still in the selling zone for AUDJPY. You still got a lot of room here, but it needs to come out of that black box area, come lower, and then we can actually sell it much more. This is for AUDJPY. Now, for GBPJPY, yes, it... It is actually tricking us a lot. It's making us uh, living in suspense. I understand GBP, JPY, because most of us are on the sell uh, and including myself. So we are all on the sell. Uh, but the thing is that it is finding support on the areas that we would enter as well. And it's flirting with those areas. But we can actually see I've marked uh, all these areas in four red squares. So that basically means as it actually falls, uh, when there is a trigger for GBP to actually fall, um, once it enters into this area right here or re-trigger our sell price, uh, it will have a lot of room to the downside, but maybe a little limited, but uh, there will be a lot of zigzag going back forth, back forth as well, uh, because right now it is um, just reacting into a lot of uh, big boys in the UK are talking about all these uh, areas of influences, especially like, um, you know, with the interest rate, with the government speech. So a lot of things we are, um, we are going to expect a lot of volatility for GBP. So, but GBP, JPY does also depend on what happens in Japan with the yen. Okay, so at this moment of time, uh, we are looking at the four hour chart. Uh, it is making a bit of progress to the upside. It is uh, not too bad. The progress is good, but we are approaching the 152.80 psychological number as well. And then we also have a um, bearish candle right here. Okay, and that is at 152.95. So I would think that the limit is actually at 153.00. So maximum, it wants to go up. It can actually go up, but 153.00 would actually be a very significant resistant area that it might start to fall there. Okay, so there you go. This is basically for GBP, JPY. So we are remaining steady on that as well at this moment of time. And then uh, Euro and ZD, we've already talked about. AUD CHF uh, is looking like it wants to actually um, reverse uh, for now on AUD CHF, but I'm not looking at any exciting uh, sort of positioning at that moment of time, because at this moment of time, what I would prefer to do as a trader is to go over the other trades, um, the other pairs that we have actually talked about, especially Euro NZD that we've already covered, uh, NZD USD, NZD CHF, USD CAD that was actually talked about uh, based on the top movers. And then we also want to look at Euro CHF, AUD JPY, AUD CHF, and also AUD and ZD. So amongst all these eight uh, trade um, uh, potential, uh, I want to actually go into it deeper on the technical side of it. And maybe out of eight, maybe three, maybe four would actually be trade signals uh, that I would actually be posting in the BKFX members area, okay? All right, guys, any other questions before we end today's session? It's gonna be a very busy, volatile week, uh, but I want you guys to be careful as best as you can, especially with stop losses as well. But if you are not thinking of stop losses and you are monitoring the market, make sure your take profit or your exit would actually be just nice as well and not too big, not too large so that you can take profit uh, and exit it uh, so that you are not trapped into hitting your SL with that, okay? All right, guys. And also because you don't have SL, then it would actually be better worthwhile for you to actually monitor your trades if you are monitoring it to have very narrow take profit area, okay? Okay, any questions, guys, before we end the session today?
All good. Brilliant. Okay, guys. So thank you very much uh, for your time in uh, today's Monday market uh, review. So we'll see you guys again on Wednesday. Uh, meantime, any questions, you can direct ping me and uh, message me on uh, wherever I'm available. Okay, so uh, with that, again, once again, thank you. Have a great uh, pipping day, great trading day, and uh, we shall be in touch. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.